A guest um, joining us via Skype from London. He's an artist and most importantly at this time a survivor of COVID-19. So hi Juma B. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. How are you? God has been faithful or correct. It definitely. So I we would love to hear your story. How how was it battling this um deadly virus now? Um, um, uh, I really don't like talking about it um, so much anymore because um, it was a terrible experience. But we thank God for giving me a second um, chance. It was uh, it started like malaria. I thought because I treated malaria before I left um, Nigeria, so um, the, the usual fever, um, headache, and all that. Then on the third day, uh, it was really serious when I couldn't breathe anymore. So um, we had to put a call through the one one one. It took a while for them to come. And then when they eventually came, um, they apologized for coming late and said, according to them here in the UK, they received like 16,000 calls in a day. Wow. So it was actually worse here in the developed um, countries. But and it, it took me like 15 days um, to finally conquer it. Though different stages, different phases um, at the interval of my experience. Um, the first stage was when I was trying to stabilize my breath. The second stage was... When I thought I wouldn't survive it, because of the pain, which was constant, um, the headache, the fever was something else, where you have to be on the bed and um, for as long as 24 hours, you be able to move, because you don't know if you have to sit, stand, or, or lie. You know, everything gets awkward for you. You know, and um, on the tenth day, though, no matter how severe it is, they will always tell you here because there's no cure yet. They will tell you. Uh, at every four hour interval, please use paracetamol and drink a lot of water, possibly eight cups in a day. You know, so I did that for like nine straight days and there was no result. It was still the same. Uh, and, um, then an uncle of mine who caught it here in, in, in London too um, and survived put a call through and told me that I should get vapor up um, for a steaming purpose. Uh, then I should get the lemon, ginger, lime and honey, you know. So I was drinking that every morning. And night. So you, uh, you you were home all through the process. You didn't have to go to any isolation center for anything. No, the thing is, um, I actually went to a hospital. But after three days, the ambulance brought me back home because you know they will tell you even um, the the uh, what's it called the practitioners themselves will tell you um, it's advisable to isolate from home. You know, but mine the reason why I had to go to the hospital was to stabilize my breath. You know, because the, the pressure of the population, there are no spaces, there are no bad spaces. And when you get there, let's assume you were about conquering yours or you have the high immune system to fight um, the virus. And you get to the hospital and the person next to you is like um, an elderly person and eventually gives up. The person on your left gives up gives up as well. You, the fear will conquer your immunity and you finally give up as well. So that's why they say, what are you even going to the hospital for when there's no cure? That's basically it. So there's really no reason to go to the hospital unless your breath, um, your, your lungs get blocked and it needs um, urgent attention. So oxygen will be used to stabilize your breath, you know. That's basically what you go to the hospital for. Not like they're giving drugs. Even the paracetamol, you still be the one to buy it yourself. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, just really quickly, you mentioned that you had malaria. Well, you thought you had malaria from Nigeria. So I'm guessing that you contracted it from Nigeria. Can you give us an idea of where you think you actually came in contact with this virus? I didn't contact the virus from Nigeria. It was malaria I had in Nigeria, and I treated it. I was fine before I left Nigeria. So I thought it was the switch of environment um, that made you be a call. Mm -hmm. That was what I thought. Um, but when I, when I knew it was COVID, that was when, it, when I couldn't breathe anymore. That's when I knew it was COVID, because that's the final stage of... Uh, so there are different symptoms of different people. For me, that was like the final stage. So that that, 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 that like... Uh, that was when I knew it was like very, very serious. But here, you know, even while so UK, you can still go to the boat and stuff, buy, buy, buy food items and stuff. Now, in my apartment, um, in the, it's like the tallest apartment in Ilford, where there are like hundreds of people. When you're going into your house, you need to go hard to go into the vehicle. So, what happens when you're not the only one is there? And it's an airborne disease, according to scientists, you know. So, in an elevator of uh, several people, when you're going to your own apartment, what happens? Mm -hmm. Actually, still where you lean on with your hands, you know, not like I don't wash my hands regularly. I travel, yeah, you know, but I mean, as a matter of fact, I still have the last one, you know. So I've been using it. I was adhering strictly to those sort of uh, guidelines, and you know, but it is well. 
they are buying the things of God, that they are taking the basket, you don't know what the drop is. You are paying with your card, all of that. You know, we have to that can be contacted. We just pray for the and God's guidance so as to survive the eventually contact the virus. All right, like, good. Um, I do my So, um, what would be your word to the people that still don't believe in coronavirus? Because we still have celebrities in Nigeria, such as Latan, who doesn't believe in um, coronavirus. What would be your word to them? No, it's a, it's a problem. Um, it's not just corona. Nigerians don't believe anything unless it happens to them or their immediate family. It's more than a, a cause than, and than a blessing for us because ignorance kills faster than death itself. You know, you won't believe even after I had it, a lot of people were still saying I didn't have it. You know, and, and in Nigeria, as we speak, I, we have been, I've been on the program for over two um trying to enlighten people, but the, the palliatives, listening to my attempts to my place, and all, and just to if people understand that you know what I didn't see it, I didn't hear it, I actually experienced what gave me a second chance. This is very real, it's not something to tell to did that. And um, um, for those people who don't actually believe, I pray it doesn't get to happen to them eventually or their family because now you can see how crowded Lagos is. I've been seeing videos all day with mm -hmm. people are trying to get them in stock. So I'm praying to God Almighty, this doesn't exceed this limit because if it does, we're in trouble. Where are the facilities? Who will help us? Who's going to rescue us? How do we attend to ourselves? Even when it, it, the population of uh, the, the contacted ones is at 20% for last week in Nigeria, people are still dying. You can imagine what's happening in the north. So I'm, I'm really scared for all. So let it not be like they've leased the, the world to Corona. Who's going to fight for us? Even here in developed countries, they can't see the public. As of yesterday, they recorded 702 deaths in the UK. You're on the internet, mm. Google it. So this is so confusing. This is a serious situation. People are dying, and you are saying, unless you see videos, unless you see people. I have, I have a friend in Lagos who's been on isolation for 27 days. She caught it from Dubai. According to her, when she got to Lagos, she actually isolated herself. Then I had, a, I, had, I had to put a call through for people to see on my Instagram. She was live on, on, her, on her bed in the Yaba Education Centre. They saw the place. And people were like, are you serious? And she told me she's been down as that. When I called her that day, it was like 17 days, like 10 days ago. Today is the 27th day. She's still... All right. Now, I made a call. This is the time. She's still positive. I, I, I so feel how... I feel I, the I can, passion yeah. on this one, and I hope people are listening. But let's touch quickly on your music before we let you go. What Are you working on anything new at the moment? And how would this experience yeah. affect your style of music going forward? Yeah, um, basically, um, shout out to S2DB Entertainment. This is actually my record label, and uh, we've been doing a lot. We are never carried away or distracted by pandemics or, you know, because we've always been fighters. And um, for, for me, uh, as an individual, uh, I'm super passionate and let me suit my focus. So the album that works with you, um, we're 90% ready as we speak, and we have like more international connection on the album. And here in the UK as well, I featured like three top artists. So the aim was for the album to drop towards November, not for this initial demonic uh, virus that's been spreading. But let God, let's watch what God has to for us. Then we have like three new videos as well. I just dropped a put a ring, which is stopping charts everywhere. Featuring nice. Um, we dropped like a week ago, and it's really trending and doing fine on YouTube. So shout out to Nigerians and Jumbo for their support. There's a lot, there's a lot for doing. No, no doubt in this business. Mm, congratulations on beating the demonic COVID, and I wish you luck in um, your endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank I you for joining us, Jumbo. All right.